This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Use code play to win 5 at the affiliate link down below to help support the show. Welcome to the play to win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we are going to be talking about some recent tournament winning decks in CEDH. I'm excited. This is this is the best part about CEDH. What decks win the tournaments? What decks are actually the best decks in CEDH? And the, o- the only way to find that out is by small sample size tournaments like we're doing today. Exactly. The definitive list. So we're going to be taking a look at the month of November, taking a look at the list that won tournaments uh, as of EDH Top 16 here. And we're going to be letting you know what we think of these lists and judge winners of tournaments that we didn't participate in. Let me just start by saying, well said. Can you yeah, can you <laughs> can you make me not sound like an asshole real quick? You're the editor. <laughs> you have to do that in post. I can't do that here. <laughs> Are we talking about just in paper tournaments, right? These uh some of them might be online tournaments, but who's to say what they are and what they aren't? Uh, not us, not the people who are bringing the information. Not, uh, okay. Yeah. Is there an amount of people at any of these tournaments that are linking these together? What does that mean? <laughs> ask, like, are they minimum 60 person tournaments or could they be an eight person tournament? These are larger ha- events. The hefties. minimum size is going to be like 67 people. Like 67. Okay. Well, that is the minimum it's size. Exactly it's exactly 67, okay. but it's also going to go up up to 205 got it okay. so these are pretty good sized tournaments that there are stakes in there are stakes there the are prizes stakes. are stakes yeah you got fillets mignons t-bones i don't know any stakes i'm a vegan now this is not a New good York bit for me strip. <laughs> let's just get into it what's the first tournament you like that to talk sounds about good. well let's talk about the most recent one here which is the lotus series one powered by chaos let's do it this is an, uh, a new tournament series that's going on and comedian actually won this tournament here with crown tevish yeah this is grixis but with a little bit extra girth i think one would say <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, most definitely. Uh, the name of this deck is Three Heads and a Lot of Tentacles equals One Wacky Night. I know Ian recently put out a video talking about how we are in the time of big, beefy commanders, it seems. A lot of bigger commanders have been taking down tournaments and doing well in tournaments. Krom Tevish, I think, is a great example of that. You have two five-mana commanders. So I think you can most easily compare this deck to something like Timna Krom. That's like really what it's, it's going to be very close to. You sacrifice Timna and white cards for Tevish Sot and and some Holebreaker Horror win conditions. There is a little bit of a trade-off. Silence effects are really good, but Tevish Sot can be a really great grind engine, and it's a really great turn one play if you can have enough resources to get there. Tevish can really take over a game by itself, which Timna is great. Timna is probably my favorite commander, but Timna can't take over the game quite like Tevish Sot can. That ultimate you can get there actually like... I'm not going to say a lot. It doesn't happen a lot, but you can threaten it. And just the threaten of that ultimate is going to make everyone change the way they play a ton. And any cards that just change the way that your opponents play the game, I think are good cards normally. If you can wield that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. There's no Skull Clamp in this deck. I feel like Skull Clamp is normally a reason why I want to play Tevish, but it's interesting to me not seeing it here. Uh, it is a dead card, though, if you don't have Tevish, so I can understand, like, if you're not trying to play dead cards, Tevish is still really good, even if you don't play any cards that are built around Tevish specifically, so... Yeah, I could see that. Skull Clamp, definitely a good one, but if you're looking to fill your deck with as many good cards as possible, I suppose I could see cutting Skull Clamp just on the thought that, like, you're not always going to have the Tevish, and you have have card draw in other ways anyway tevish already can draw you cards so maybe it's a little bit of like a win more or something i'm not sure i could see that yeah let's talk about some interesting picks uh here's a card i've never seen before mist of loria i was just looking at that yeah what is this is this a lord of the rings card that i just missed it is yeah it looks like it's from the commander set here so this is two and a blue for a sorcery with replicate blue replicate if you don't remember this is an old keyword from like original ravnica block i could i'm pretty sure sure yeah i'll believe you on that one it says return target non-land permanent and each other non-land permanent with the same mana value as that permanent to their owner's hands what did i read that right yeah, each return target non-land permanent and each other non-land permanent with the same mana value. Normally, that's like with the same name, like Maelstrom yeah. Pulse. It's yeah. like destroy all Tarmogoyfs. But no, this is like you target. Huh. Wait a minute. Yeah, so you you target Dranith Magistrate. And then you bounce Dranith Magistrate, Dauntless Dismantler, and Collector Oof. Yes. And then if you replicate this, you also targeted Opposition Agent. So it bounced Opposition Agent, Timna, 
and Eternal Witness, your Eternal Witness. This is probably going to be at its bigger stance, a five mana or maybe a six mana bounce all per all non lane permanents to their owner's hands. It's a sorcery, so that kind of stinks. But like, if you can do this for six mana and you can bounce threes, twos, and ones, that's everything. Yeah, this is crazy. And if you no, only... that's more than the three. No, six mana would be the regular one, and then you get three replicated. So that would be one, two, three, and four for six mana. So that would definitely like. There's no five mana permanence in CDH. So at six mana, this bounces all nine lane permanents. No five mana permanence in CEDH. Besides, it plays two of them in your command <laughs> yeah. zone. But like that, maybe that's good. Maybe you like you leave your five mana commanders and bounce everything it's else. Kinda like, it's kind of like toxic delta use in like a lot of these decks too where like you play a really big commander that has six seven butt and then that way your toxic deluge for five just leaves your commander around still i can i can see it's the exact same thing yeah and i like this more than like any other kind of mass bounce because it's super flexible too like if you only need to bounce three drops this is a three mana card that does that like that's so good i like this one a lot i truly this is the first time i'm seeing this card it bounces being, your own dock side bounces your own dock side too if you want to bounce the collector roof and your dock side at the same time that's, that's pretty really good. funny um wow. it being a sorcery is a stinker i that i'm not gonna lie but Big so is stinker. there is toxic deluge that is still very playable like there are other cards that are like this we're used to seeing bounce spells out at instant speed but this does a lot more than just a bounce spell this is like almost always going to be bound several things no i'm sorry this will always be bound several things yeah this will sometimes be bounced many many several things right yeah. oh my god it bouncing your own stuff in this deck in particular is so good because like it's things like if you lost out on thassa's oracle yep. you can get that back i'm looking at dockside extortions obviously but new cards like flesh duplicate if you uh whoa you, yeah that's true uh, as that vanishing goes down and you're and it's about to die <laughs> bounce it right back up so you can cast yep, it again that's so funny getting more triggers off of orcish bowmaster is sure. always good too so i really like this i am really liking this uh there is a curse totem in this deck too yeah curse totem i also think is a very powerful card that i don't always see in the grixis versions of these decks normally i see it in blue black yeah i i think curse totem is kind of an interesting one it's a really good silver bullet against certain decks great against kinnon good against anything that's playing kiki jiki winoda um thrasios things like that but it doesn't do anything against a lot of the grixis piles which is like the best thing in the format yeah. it's a tedh move i think is I, what that yeah. is that's a tedh yeah. tweak to this deck like you you know what the meta is going to be you expect to see at least one of those per pod and you want one card in your deck that just shuts off a deck at the pod and then you can handle the other two i like it i think those were really the only two like major standout cards um i guess stubborn denials is a one mana counter spell that we don't see too often but even if your crom's not in play like if you're trying to go off with Hallbreaker horror for spike is maybe just maybe that's just fine other notables for me are Talion and Beseech the Mirror, just because they're like new-ish cards. True, yeah. To me, they're not staples just yet because I just have it hasn't been enough time. But I think as time will tell, that these cards will be close to staples, if not staples. Beseech feels great in a deck where you're looking to find Dockside Extortionist for your Displacer Kitten line, yeah. or you're looking to find Thassa's Oracle. This also doesn't find just a permanent for some reason in my head. I thought that it found like a permanent. You can also just find Tainted Pact with this and cast it. You can you can anything. Like there anything, are so yeah. like anything format or less, which this deck is full of things. Um, Beseech the Mirror, great card. And Talion being an extra draw engine. Um, I, I, I like think that, one that a lot card too. is really picking up in popularity. I'm seeing it a lot more in top 16 decks in the 99 specifically. Yeah. And we're, we're not going to be done talking about that card either. And the damage is not nothing. I also did notice that this deck is running the Counterbalance and Sensei's Top little combo Ooh, in here too. Sure, which sure, Which is something sure. I tend to see in more controlling decks and less in faster decks. But again, this is not really the fastest version of Grixis. I think these, these Grixis decks, especially with the card advantage engines of the Command Zone, are built to be a lot slower. So... I actually think I kind of really like that tech. Yeah, I, I especially like it with commanders that can change the top deck of your library throughout the turn cycle. Yeah, Chrom, you can't really control it, but it will. you will be drawing cards off of Chrom, which is going to change the top of your counterbalance, which means that your opponents aren't always going to know what the top card is and what will be countered. Hiding that information can a lot of times be really good. Um, and then also, obviously, Tevish Sot can kind of change it on your turn if you're looking to go through win, but not at instant speed, so not as helpful really there. 
Any other thoughts about Ian's deck here? Not much. Besides, it's a solid Grixis list with a couple of fun new cards. Um, deck seems really strong. The next tournament we're going to talk about is Final Flavor 2023, which was won by Craig, a.k.a. Brazy Tree here. Yeah, we were just talking about Talion. We're about to talk about Talion a little bit more. We're going to talk about Talion a lot more. So Talion, we've learned, is really good in the 99, but we're also seeing now Talion win an event. Should we read Talion? Commander. Let's read Talion and what Talion does. Why yeah. not, you know? It's a podcast. Do you want to read Talion? Sure, I'll do it. Talion, the kindly lord. Too generic, a blue and a black for a legendary creature, fairy noble. With flying, it says, as Talion, the kindly lord, enters the battlefield, choose a number between 1 and 10. I don't like that. Me neither. Why not just choose a choose number? Choose a number. Should just be choose a number. Anyway, whenever an opponent casts a spell with the mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life and you draw a card. Also, it's a 3-4. That was a nice treat. We haven't heard you read a card on the podcast in a little while. I don't do that much. Yeah. Uh, The card draw is what gets you going on this one. If you name normally one or two, I think I've seen a lot of people say two is the number. I've seen a couple people say one is the number. I think it'll probably change. Sometimes maybe three will be number, but probably mostly it'll be two or one. I would agree with that too. Yeah. The card draw is what we're after. That two damage. Yes, that can stack up. Not the draw, the main appeal, but eventually, sure. Yeah, could do something. In conjunction with with some other cards in the deck the two the two damage really does add up sure, and actually yep. does become important when you're grinding throughout the game yeah i feel like we should just talk about the big one that works the best with talion i think which is blood chief ascension yeah so i guess a uh, little disclaimer uh this deck is gonna pop up on the channel in the in, in soon yeah in the soon in, in the soon yeah we just we just last night recorded our best decks of 2023 episode and by line was night, one of them. I mean, like, well, it's, it's like a, like over a week. For you, a yeah, while ago. Like For us week, right yeah. now at this moment, last night. So Italian's, this shit's fresh in our mind. Yeah. Italian is great. This Blood Chief Ascension is awesome. You should read this one because no one knows what the hell this card does besides Italian pilots. So Blood Chief Ascension is one black mana for an enchantment that says at the beginning of each end step, if an opponent lost two or more life this turn, you may put a quest counter on it. So that's the Italian coming in. If the Italian triggers, they lose the quest counter on. Beautiful. Yeah. Whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere. So that means if they cast an instant and the instant goes into graveyard, that counts. If they land, sorry to interrupt, but creature continue. dies. Yep. Stuff like that. Yep. So when that trigger happens, if Blood Chief's Ascension has three or more quest counters on it, you may have that player lose two life. If you do, you gain two life. Brandon must have gained like 40 life in one of our games last night when we played throughout through this effect, just because everyone was just like, well, it's just two damage. I'm still going to cast my cards. Like, I can't really play around that. Uh, eventually, that stacks up, and he had just gained so much life. By the end of the game, he was at like 40 some life, and we were all in single digits, I think. And the best part was that going into the the game we all talked about how underrated we were rating it we thought this card was bad we're we like this, this card, card is so horrible. stupid yeah. and like it makes sense it, to me this is a casual card through and through it's a great card in casual but in cdh it's just never been good now with talion with a, an effect in your command zone that can reliably deal two damage multiple times in a turn cycle that makes this card i think a lot different a it's lot better. better than it's ever been before in my opinion this is actually like a legitimate threat that kills the table at this point because it's so much easier to trigger instead of relying on your opponent's mana crypts. I just think of it almost like as another stacks piece. It just limits your opponents from going through too many storm things. Brain freeze, they cannot brain freeze themselves with this out because all those brain freeze cards, those yeah. are going, they, they're going to lose two damage for every copy that's going to be six damage they're just not going to be able to go through that line so like it's just a stacks piece against certain combos and then it also is just like if you're going to grind and be a little bit slower like this deck is trying to do you're, you're going to dominate the late game because you're you're going to be able to just kill your opponents yeah 100 percent. so this card definitely overperforms in this deck here let's stay on some of these enchantments because the meat hook massacre is yeah. in here just another more incidental life loss this two mana drain, I think, might actually be coming up a lot more than I thought it would naturally would here. But adding the Talion two life drain on top of like having Meat Hook Massacre in play too just really cycles through your opponent's life totals. Yeah, definitely. And I'm a big fan of this type of sweeper that you can control what you are killing. We just talked about the Replicate Blue card last... Uh, which one? What was it called? Uh, I've already forgotten. Oh, man. What an impossible question. What a question. good time it was. What a good time. The card that we were talking about is... Something of Lorien. 
Oh, Mists of Lorien. We're just talking about how that card is good for the same reason I think Meat Hook Massacre is good because sometimes you can keep your Talion around. You can kind of choose a little bit what goes. And like you said, that drain effect is nothing to snooze at. That's going to add up. Yeah, definitely not. So I, I do like seeing that in here too. Counterbalance again. Yeah, counterbalance again in here too. Uh, a lot of other cards in like the artifacts that you don't see in every single deck. Um, you have Thought Vessel as a mana rock. Interesting. Which my eyebrow is raised, but you do draw a lot of cards in this deck. And uh, yeah. I'd rather have this than the land. What's the land that too many casual Reliquary commander tower. decks play? You're like her tower. Yeah, I'd rather have Thought Vessel than that, I guess. The but. only time that I've thought about Thought Vessel in CDH was when in my head comparing it with Necropotence. Because Necropotence with no hand size means oh, you don't yeah. have to disclose those cards. That's pretty neat. This deck is not playing Necro, which maybe that's a stinker. I don't know if you're if you should be. I don't see ad nauseum. I don't see peer into the abyss. No, but there is a born upon the wind, though. There is a born upon the wind. Um, so I normally see in conjunction with those other cards. Yeah. Who who knows? Maybe maybe this is a deck that could play Necro. Maybe you're too controlling. You don't want to lose too much life. I still think Necro is good, and you can play it at five life a turn and still be thrilled with that exchange, especially if you're gaining more too. Uh, but either way. Um, yeah, either way, power, powerful powerful card Thought Vessel is maybe. I yeah. guess I mean, not really. It's not that powerful, but I want to keep the cards. Moving on to some other cards. I guess like if you have Talion out and you have the One Ring out and like you're doing a bunch with like Manamo and stuff like that too. Like Manamo is a card now that every single blue deck is just playing now because just for free, basically, you have the option to later untap the One Ring. Not like for no mana, but just like it's a, a free slot in instead of an island. Yeah. You can play that instead. Yeah, definitely. Also notice in the instance, there's a lot of other interesting cards that I think are also really good, like TEDH picks here too. I like trick bind more in a TEDH setting than I do in just like random out there areas. TEDH being tournament EDH, which is specifically CDH geared for tournaments, just in case. Yeah. Like um, this is a meta call to me. Yeah, That's definitely. what I mean when I say that, I guess. For me, trick bind and stern scolding are not cards that I'm really looking towards a lot of times. I get it. This deck wanted tournament so i'm not going to say that these cards are bad by any means and this does make me want to try these cards again because it's been a minute since i've tried them but i've never been too much of a fan of either of these cards surgical scolding is obviously a newer one i think right it wasn't a reprint it's a new card no it's a brand new card yeah, yeah it's similar to other cards it does counter a lot for me i've said this before the reason why counter spells are good is because of that flexibility when you lose out on that flexibility they become a lot worse when they get too narrow and you can't counter the, all the things that you want to not as good but in low color, you don't have a lot of um, creature removal, and maybe the stern scolding is just a little bit better than like a rapid hybridization or something, because you stop the thoracal or you stop the dock side. Like, I get that. Yeah, I could see that, because I, I, I didn't really notice that they weren't playing as much creature removal. That's not like the dismember and the deadly relic. So I think that is kind of an interesting way that you can stop that from happening. And now instead of playing Stifle, like you can play that and have a lot more utility too. Interesting one is Yeheni's Expertise. Ooh, yes. Instead of Toxic Deluge. I've been thinking about this one since I proxied this it, one. If you're just looking to get more card advantage and more bang for your buck, you want to, I guess not really card advantage, but um, like mad advantage you just like get to cast another spell for free after the henny's expertise yeah i could see that if you're looking to control the table a little bit this also the minus three is not going to kill your commander but the minus three will kill a lot of relevant stacks pieces i think that's another big reason why this is played is because of that fact too and like you can do that and then follow up with like opposition agent yep. which isn't going to die because of how the sequencing of everything works yeah so so i kind of really like that yeah definitely um Abolith spawn is another one that uh we i saw a little bit of chatter when the card came out and then i haven't really seen a lot of it since it's in here that ward two Honestly, after seeing it in play last night, I think I kind of want to try it in Nimrus, actually. Like, it's it's a really impactful effect, and if nobody sees it coming when they have a Dockside Extortionist on the stack, like, I would love to get some treasures first, make some mana. I mean, I guess with Dockside, you have to crack the treasures right away, but... Well, I mean, what's really interesting, I think, about it is if you respond to somebody else's trigger with this to copy their trigger, your trigger will resolve first. Because of how the stack works, yours is going to go on the stack last, which means it's going to come off the stack first. So if they have a Thassa's Oracle and you respond with the Abolith oh. spawn, you take their Thassa's Oracle trigger, yours is going to resolve first. So if you already have the Demonic Constellation in hand, you can just win right there because of it. That's absolutely 
crazy. That Holy is, shit. I mean, that is pretty neat to like remember that like you get the trigger first. I feel like that's what makes this card good, which I wasn't really thinking about when I initially evaluated this card that like that's a big part of it. You get it first. And there's a lot of really good enter the battlefield triggers that we see. Ranger Captain of Eos is a really good one too that just also gets you a lot more like incidental value as well. Maybe not in this deck. Actually, there's no one mana creature in this deck. So point stands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And the War 2 also makes your opponents have to second guess all of their Dockside Extortionists because normally they would want to just kill this thing, but they can't with the War 2 maybe. If they Dockside, you're going to get those Dockside triggers first. You're going to get all that treasure you first. Know, that's so. extra funny. I didn't remember that when we were playing the game. Yeah, it, I'm it, glad it, didn't it didn't come up, come up but yeah. <laughs> I did not remember that as I was trying to make decisions. Children is another card that I want to talk about real quick. Just more because, drain effects. Yeah, um, more drain, more cards like Blood Chief Ascension and Meat Hook Massacre and Children. When you add all these things together you get a lot of ways to kill your opponents but shieldred has been one that's been really doing well for me lately i've been playing this card a little bit and i've been liking it a lot happy to see it here i think this is a great spot for it honestly i think blue black is now becoming like one of the better wheels colors now because between shieldred notion thief and orcish bow masters there's so many great things you can do now if you have mass draw effects so it's cool to see that in the windfall that they play in this deck, too. Vendillion Click. That's another one. That's a weird one. We don't see that one very often. That one definitely is a cool piece of interaction. I like that there's a lot of surprises in this deck list. I feel like that's what is helpful in winning tournaments, especially in CDH, is surprising your opponent. Vendillion Click is undoubtedly a powerful card. It hasn't seen play recently because of just better things have been printed newer things have been printed but its effect is still strong that instant speed ability to strip a card out of someone's hand is relevant so and it's on a creature too which is a lot harder to interact with and it makes them draw a card if you do that player it does yeah and draws a card so if they have a fast oracle on the stack you can with a creature force them to draw a card which means that they're they're dispels and their spell pierces they can't even stop them anymore so like this deck is obvious. It's geared to beat Thassa's Oracle Dockside. Like, that was the mindset going in, and it looks like it did that. It's cool that you can see that, too. Yeah, and I think Spell Skyping in this deck also Ooh, is yeah. a very cool piece of interaction as well. Underrated too. card, I think. If you want to protect pieces at all and you're in blue, yeah. I just think Spell Pierce, uh, Spell Skype is so good. Especially because there are a lot of really impactful creatures in this deck. There's a bunch of clones, including Sakushima the Imposter. So you want to make sure that like everything that you're doing is staying around on the board. Board, making multiple bow masters or something whatever you're trying to do the sakashima is really nice because then you can copy your italian and have them both and have italian on one and italian on two that's super sweet and yeah, then since you sometimes sees like sakashima the other one uh, of a thousand faces in these decks for that reason too yeah that one would i like that one too especially if you're playing other clones because that one gets rid of the legend rule whereas this one changes the name so you can keep them both but getting rid of the legend rule means that your phantasmal image can then also copy yeah. italian but that's it depends on what cute. you want to do because I do you don't like need all that. that. Yeah, I do like that this one, like if you have it on something for a while, you can bounce it back and then change it into something else if you wanted to. So I think it just kind of depends on the tech you're looking for. This deck is, is preparing for the late game, and I think this Shakashima helps in that way. Yeah, most definitely. Hey, in general, what do you think of these um MDFC lands like Seagate Restoration? In two-color decks like this, I love them. I think I, they're great. I do tend to play them more in two-color decks, but I have I also find myself not including them a ton, too. It sucks. If you're playing Ad Nauseam, it's it's not worth it. If you're playing a fast deck, it's just you're never going to cast it, and it's always going to be a blue source that you pay three for. No. But in a deck like this where you could conceivably get to that high mana, seven mana for it, and be able to do that, I mean, it's not going to happen often, and I certainly like it more in decks like Yuriko that could utilize its high mana cost for something. Ooh, yeah, really like it there. But yeah. um, I think it's fine here. Like, it's fine. I like the cycle in the really slow stacks decks, too, like the white and the green one and like those kind of stacks oh, yeah. as well there's just not so many decks that i i tend to play that get the chance to play these lands i think so like being able to play shatter skull smashing i always like that opportunity i think shatter skull is probably one of my favorite ones because it's removal on a land like I think that's it's the incredible best of the cycle too For, yeah because yes. CMC is only two, which yeah. is also it's, really helpful in a lot of cases. Last thing I want to mention about Talion is that trigger is must. That happens. You will draw the card when your opponents cast a spell. True. So if you have a Thassa's Oracle trigger on the stack and they cast a spell that forces you to draw a card, that will be not fun for you. So make sure you are prepared for that. You have... I don't know. You get rid of your Italian. You make sure they don't have any spells. Maybe you do, that's what the trick bind is for. Maybe your that's what the trick Italian bind is triggers. for. Sure. Yeah, you can ha you can do that. Absolutely. So yeah, just be aware of that if you want to play this deck. But other than that, Italian, I think is a real 
It's gonna it's gonna be around. I think. I think it's gonna be a good deck in the format. Most definitely. Cool. Do you want to talk about the next one then? Let's do it. Moving right. on. So this one is CEDH Top Deck GG Expo. This is a big one because this is actually a 205 person event. Big. Huge. Wumbo. Yeah. Wumbo. I Wumbo. You Wumbo. He, she, we Wumbo. Wumboween. It's Wumbology, SpongeBob. This was won by Doom DG. And this is, surprise, surprise. This is a uh, Blue Farm deck. This is Blue Farm. This is Tim Necrom Blue Farm. Tier 2, doesn't win tournaments, is the name of the deck, funnily enough, too. First thing I want to mention, Boromir. Boromir. Boromir is here. What a cool card. I haven't seen it a ton just yet. I've seen it a little. I think the card is great. I'm happy to see it here. That uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast a counter that spell, that's pretty helpful. I love that it counters Force of Wills, Force of Negations, all that. But the fact that you can sacrifice it, not only to protect your creatures, but to turn that off when you need to. If your opponent says, hey, player B is going for a win, and I, player C, have a Force of Will that I would like to use on their win, but I can't because you're Boromir, you're like, no problem. Boromir's gone. Please save us all. Yep. I love that the stacks piece that you can turn off if you need to. Um, and that indestructible is going to be relevant. Someone's going to, I mean, unfortunately, in CDH, a lot of our sweepers are like Toxic Illusions, Cyclonic Rift. So but this like isn't going to help against those. Play. But Dam sees play. There are other things in combat where you can make favorable blocks or favorable attacks because you can protect with this. It, that'll come up. I also like that it has vigilance too, like being sure. able Underrated. to stay up is a really good feature. Yeah, as a 3-3, being able to block Timnas, being able to threaten a lot of blocks. Vigilance, I think, very underrated, especially in multiplayer. Yeah. The fact that you can threaten a block against three players while Generally, also attacking. Generally, it's one of the best keywords in Commander, I think. I don't know about one of the best, but it is still very good and underrated. I guess, yeah. Well, not in CEDH, but just like in... In, like, regular EDH, I would yeah. think if I'm trying to, like, consistently kill the table without worrying about myself like vigilance is something I vigilance sure is up there flying and then vigilance if yeah. i'm looking for a creature that can attack well sure yeah what other what other unique cards is this deck playing besides that it looks like it's more or less blue farm i'm seeing fire covenant i love seeing fire covenant in these lists yeah i think that makes sense you know we're leaning a little bit less into ad nauseum so i think leveraging your life total in this way is a little bit nicer yeah we, it's important to remember that blue farm is usually not a turbo deck it hasn't been a turbo deck for a while it's really a mid-range deck that has the ability to go fast if it needs to in the right pod or whatever but feels more comfortable just like deploying engines like Ristic studies and lothos and fairy masterminds and esper sentinels and yada 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 you have all access to all the best colors and therefore all the best engines in the format so you play all those and once your window is perfect you go for a very protected win the deck is great it's been great it'll continue to be great do we want to spend a whole much more time? Do I don't really think else? there's, yeah, there's really no other big, big additions in this besides like maybe Born Upon the Win is also in here too, sure. which again, like the fact that that card cycles just means that it can just go in all kinds of decks. I love, I mean, Born Upon the Win is perfect for this strategy that you just want to kind of hang back. I mean, there's going to be times where you're just going to be able to intuition somehow get this, just cast a uh, Underworld Breach on someone's, on the stack or something and win on top turn, of somebody yeah. else. Like, um, yeah, that one's a, a great include in these decks. I love it in all the Grixis decks. Yeah, so it's cool to see that Blue Farm won the largest event that we've yeah. talked about so far. Yeah, here, I mean, that's just kind of, it. I mean, obviously we talked, we joked in the beginning about how this is a small sample size. You can't take everything from these, but Blue Farm is still and continues to be one of the best decks in the format. And yeah, winning this big tournament definitely is another bit of proof for that. All right, so the next tournament we're going to talk about is called Lightspeed, and the winner of this was Austin, a.k.a. Optics here, and this is such a cool deck. This is called Paco Beats. I love your notes for this one. What a cool deck. What a cool deck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Cameron wrote down about this one. What a cool deck. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to see Paco and Halden all the time, but it's definitely increasing popularity. I, I got to talk about this right off the bat. I have to go for the big one. You know which one I'm talking about already. Morog Fury of Akum. Let me tell you. Yeah, if you're trying to beat down with your commanders. Can we read this card, please? This yes. Is, can we, let's read this card. So this is four and two red for a 6-6 six, six legendary creature Minotaur Warrior. Each creature you control gets plus one, plus zero oh for each time it attacked this turn. So if it attacks for its regular one time, just one plus. But... But it has landfall, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if... It's your main phase. There's an additional combat phase after this phase. 
at the beginning of that combat phase, untap all creatures you control. Now, this is the one that you have to do your land in your second main phase, because the way it's worded, you don't get the bonus main phase, or you don't get the bonus combat phase if you do it in your first main. But fetch lands count for double for this if you fetch your land in your second main phase right and also obviously paco gets bigger with each one of its attacks and this morog makes it even bigger morog also kind of like leads to card advantage because your paco deck gets you your card because paco and halden get you that card advantage from attacking this is just going to be like four more cards you can play four more cards you can play for each combat which awesome, you might you might not even be able to get to play because you're just killing you're just gonna, them with commander win. damage at yeah. the same time. Six mana is a hefty cost for sure, but you're in teamer. You're not playing black spells. You're not doing no. anything else. Like, like you're already trying to jam a five mana commander. So like by the time you want more rog, you're gonna have the mana for it. And you're it. you're a big mana deck. You're playing time warp. You're playing temple manipulation, temporal manipulation. You're playing a lot of extra turn spells already. Um, you're already playing big stuff. Morog just makes you go bigger and way over the top. I love it in a deck like this. There's so many cards to talk about. I want to talk about Wizards of Thay. Yeah. Because this is another card I had never seen before. This is three and a blue for a creature human wizard. It's a 3-3 three, three with Myriad, which I always forget what Myriad does, but when it attacks for each opponent, you make an, a token of this creature that's tapped and attacking each other opponent as well. And you exile those tokens at the end of combat. Yeah. It has two other flat text abilities that's the technical term for it sure instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast and you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash so when you're attacking all of your instant and sorcery spells are going to cost three mana less so your time warps and your other effects like this are basically just going to be their color mana requirements basically time walks is you're going to make all of your extra turn spells into two mana extra turn spells and at that point they get a lot better you got to attack with it but the upside at that point seems very high especially when you are trying to power out some of these really expensive cards like Rishkar's Expertise. Mm -hmm. Draws you a ton of cards and lets you replay one of your time walks that you get in your hand then too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chandra's Ignition is another one. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. This card is so wild. Dog gets big. You're just going to be able to kill your opponents with it. Or at the very least, Wrath the Board and keep your commander around. Fun that, fact, that this was the good. best card in Magic Origins draft. You think? Okay. Oh, oh hands down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't, honestly, I didn't draft much then, but I believe it. Here's another weird one that I haven't seen before. I don't know how I'm going to pronounce this. Irenicus's Vile Duplication? Is that Iren Irenicus's? Irenicus's Vile Duplication. I like Irenicus. Yeah, that yeah. sounds better. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, except the token has flying and isn't legendary if that creature is legendary. That's crazy. So you just make another Paco? Make another Paco with flying that can connect <laughs> and just get big. Yeah, just like more threats. Love it. Wow, that's so cool. What the hell is round two? Untap target creature. After this main phase, there's an additional combat. So that's basically another time walk or effect then, no, and too. not only that but it has flashback too so for seven mana you can get two extra combats how about summer bloom yeah dude summer how bloom is an summer interesting bloom? one so here. paco if you have the paco holden thing going out you can it's play count the cards right play th yeah play it no uh paco is just cast you may play non-creature oh, spells it play? from exile yeah play non-creature spells it says play, but because it says spells, I can't play lands. You may. Oh no! It says you may play land and cast non-creature oh, spells it says from play one card land you and exile. Cast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's how you solve the problem of oh man, all these lands are so bad. Is you play Summer Bloom and you just get them all. Morag also helps with that too. If you can play your opponent's lands, you get more combats. With oh, that. that's so good. Oh, yeah. it's such a good combo with Summer Bloom. I love that too. Um, I love. Legolas's quick reflexes. We haven't talked about the card on the podcast yet. Have we not? Let's what does it do? It's a it's yeah, what does it do? So it's a green mana for an instant with split second. It says untap target creature until end of turn, it gains hexproof, reach, and whenever this creature becomes tapped, it deals damage equal to its power to up to one target creature. This is like the perfect home for this card. Yeah, I really. I mean, this card does so many things to just one mana. I, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, the untapping a creature, just that alone, not often, but just that alone will be enough if you can block something good. Um, 
the Until It's End of Turn, it gains Hexproof, just using it as a way to protect your pocket, which is the main thing you want to do. The Reach is also not as often going to become relevant, but every once in a while, you'll be able to block a Flying Crom and feel very smart. Um, you're not going to be able to do the tapping thing because you're most often going to be doing this on a Paco, and Paco can't tap itself. So, Well, what I think is going to happen is you're going in the beginning of combat step, someone's going to try to remove the Paco, and then in response, you're going to Legolas's quick reflexes. No one's going to have any interaction, and then you'll get to just attack and uh, kill something you know what? while yeah. you go to Maybe, combat, you might, too. You might be right. That actually, that part might come up. Yeah, dude, you're probably right. That's great. This card is perfect here, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know a better home for this card. Um, but Legolas' quick re reflexes, just a lot of good value. Split second, just put this card over the top. Yeah, definitely. Um, really like seeing that here. Memory lapse. What an interesting counter spell here. This one's really good because you put it back on top. <laughs> yeah, and it's you get so it on Paco good. if they add nos. And you're like, no, you don't add nos. You put that on top. <laughs> Go to my turn. Great. I'm gonna try to take that and add nos. Oh, that's a big yeah. brain move, Paco Halden. Yeah, that's players. that's, that's how you win games. Like that's that, how you win games. That is how you win a game of CDH. No one's gonna see that coming no just like that one's that one's gonna or win a lot of games fucking cast seed time yeah dude seed time is another one <laughs> there's a lot of built-in like fun protection in this deck and when i say fun like really good and clever <laughs> yeah it, there is a lot of really good and clever stuff in here too like just even let's talk about more of these instants too decisive denial also super super cool it's as a counter spell i mean it's not a good counter spell but when it also doubles as a creature removal spell too this is basically like the blue green um Version, version of that of blue, black, blue spell. black card. Yeah. Wow, that was a great the one that analogy equal to the amount of do. cards that they yep, have. Yep. This, it's on screen now. I'm glad that you and I were on the same. I page. know what card you're talking about, but yeah. I don't remember the name right now. Something with a letter in it. I think it has a letter in it. I think there's a couple letters in in it. Moving on, Expel from Araska. I haven't seen this one yet. No, me neither. If you have the city's blessing, you may put that permanent on top of its owner's library instead. So this is a not it's a bounce spell that you can bounce to the top of the library. This is another way to just get just basically steal something that your opponent has. Yeah, this is next level Paco Holden stuff. When you get put to put their ring on top of their library, oh, then go to your turn and yeah. attack and take their ring. What I really like this is that if you're sick of getting like the random flips to Paco and Halden and like losing out on that, like this is really cool ways that man, I really wish that we were talking about green and red cards that could do that because that makes me like want to do this in like a tally Ooh, and like make sure that yeah. a tally gets you good stuff instead of shit. Cameron's been playing a tally, new a tally recently, so looking for other ways to get stuff on top of your library. So far, these cards are not a tally cards, and I really wish that they were. Hunter's Insight is another really interesting one, a removal spell that draws you a ton. That's a big draw spell in this deck. Yeah, like, some of these cards feel bad if there's a Dranith Magistrate in play and, like, you haven't been able to get your stuff going on, but I think half of the reason that that doesn't happen is because you go, I'm playing Paco Holden, and nobody's expecting half of these cards to come out from you. Honestly, it doesn't look like there's a lot of removal for creatures anyway. It kind of looks like the, the deck builder was just like, yeah, we're just going to lose the Dranith Magistrate. You know, like that, we're just going to lose the Dranith Magistrate and just that's fine. Well, there's, uh, there's just going to be some cards that you're going to have a hard time against. Dranith seems like one of them. Maybe I mean, you just don't even expect to see a lot of Dranith Magistrate either. Maybe. So that's another thing. Like this, decks like this can also really take advantage out of that too. This deck has a lot of ramp. So maybe you're just like, let me just, if I think I'm going to see the Dranith, I'm going to try to get to a turn one. How did, I mean, getting to all that mana turn one, that's, that's hard. You're not going to be able to outrace it a lot of the time. But. I, I don't know. Yeah, just so, some cards you're not going to be able to beat, and this one's going to have a hard time against Dranith. But besides that, this deck seems like it's got a lot of gas. We haven't even gotten to the enchantments yet. No, and there's two artifacts I want to talk about. Like, there's just so much stuff. We don't get oh, to yeah. talk about Paco Halden a lot, so we got a lot of good stuff to talk about here. There's two artifacts that they play that are really good with Paco specifically here. One of them's Wing Boots, which gives it Flying and Ward 4, which sure. is basically protection from everything basically hex proof yeah and unblockable more or less <laughs> and then the other one is the reaver cleaver yeah Have this I one's neat seen this card before oh yeah it gives a creature plus one plus one trample and whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker create that many treasures oh i like that it says or planeswalker yeah three to play three to equip is a decent amount but that amount of treasures is great there is another equipment that is a blue card that does this but allows you to draw cards for the amount rather than create treasures i can't think of the name of it right now i wonder if that card was considered because that seems like another one that would be great here i but feel like in this case you need more treasure than you do need cards yeah and hunter's insight kind 
kind of does the same thing and maybe just hunter hunter's insight does that effect better and you don't want two of that effect so i could see that yeah so it's a, a six mana ritual basically but you're gonna get a lot more out of this then one more instant i want to talk about trick bind this is another trick bind deck. oh another trick bind deck that's you know what that's interesting maybe we should start thinking about trick bind. We're, uh yeah also another stubborn denial deck too interesting mm, i wonder hmm, i wonder these hmm. fat commanders hmm. and they're stubborn yeah denial. stubborn de stubborn denial makes a lot of sense if you're playing a commander that you plan to get out a lot that has four power or greater i'm thinking about stubborn dial a lot recently the cheaper the mana the cheaper the counter spell i can get and the more of those cheap counter spells i can get the better and this is a pretty good one yo there's a quarter calling in this deck and there's literally like only three or four creatures that you would ever tutor it's got to be wizards of they or morag right like or maybe gilded drake that's like those are your only targets there's Frexy no Metamorph, dock side I guess. in this deck there is no dock side that can't be right there is no dock side extortionist in this deck we can't be there how I don't understand how we're let me hold on there. let me let Wait me refresh let me refresh the Re page refresh yeah there's still no dock side let me look at the history what is how yeah was there ever a dock side maybe this person just like lost their copy of dock side right before the tournament and couldn't find a new one how do you not play dock side in a deck that has a five mana commander that you want to get out dock side extortionist eight days ago was removed. From the deck. Really? For what? Does it say what was put in? Yeah, it was a big swap with a bunch of things. It looks like it was removed at the same time Phyrexian Metamorph and Court of Calling were added. Interesting. Interesting. Dockside removed from the deck and Trickbind in the deck. These are things that I didn't think would happen. These are things that I didn't think would happen either. Here are some other things that I didn't think would happen. That must have been a misclick. Song of Creation and Swarm Intelligence are in the enchantment slot of this deck. So Song of Creation is a card that you might remember from like when Yidris was a commander that people would play. Yep. And it, like you could storm off with this card, but it's not really something that you see too much anymore, but it's a really insane effect. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards is so fucking busted. That is crazy. And the additional land that comes with it too, even better. The beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Who cares? You're not making it to your end yeah. step because you're surely winning your the game if your deck's built right. Your significantly bigger because you have all the Paco cards that you're getting too. Yeah, so like you don't even need cards in hand. You have access no. to those other cards. And it's then do you just want to double all the fucking spells that you cast? Swarm Intelligence feels crazy to me also. The fact that we're playing Swarm Intelligence and not Dockside what makes me wild really confused. What a win but condition. <laughs> I know. This is a card that makes me go... You want dock side, so you can cast this, right? But either way, yeah, whenever you cast instant Maybe sorcery, you're copy just gonna it. you find everyone else's dock side so much that you don't even need your own dock side. That's honestly probably the thought process, and I can't say that I agree with it. I, I <laughs> can't either, but I, I haven't played enough Paco and Halden what to do dispute we know? it. What, yeah. this, this person won a tournament. We didn't do that. Exploration, though, to add on to like the Summer Bloom style effects, when you just get to play more and more lands, maybe that's something else that comes up. Like You're playing so many lands from other people's deck that that exploration's like a better dock side because it doesn't trigger other dock sides and you get the mana over the long period of time. I see why these other cards are included. Exploration makes sense, just not including dock side. I, I, can, I don't see that one just yet, but maybe I'm not there. Maybe I'll get there. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Should we move on? Yeah, let's move on. Do we have one more tournament? We have two more tournaments, We have two actually. more, okay. This was the deck that won the Treasure Series 8 by Chaos. Uh, winner was Tumujin11. I'm really sorry, Tumujin, if I'm mispronouncing your name multiple times now. Um, but this is Tivit, Seller of Secrets. My secrets can't be taught is yes. the name of this list. Maybe we should move on because we, we can't teach anything We don't want to do deck. any secrets. I mainly just wanted to ask what you think of this list because you have been you still have Tivit together. I still do, technically, yes. This one seems pretty stock. I really like um, some notable includes, I think, are Languish, which is another, it's a sweeper that doesn't kill your commander, which I really like that. Minus four, minus four to everything, which does kill a lot. Touch the Spirit Realm is one that I've gone in and out with. I have it currently in my list. Uh, the channel ability, that is just so powerful. I just want and more of that so effect. so difficult to interact yeah. with, too. That's um, but, what I think makes it like certainly worth considering. This one, only exiling artifacts or creatures, not enchantments, not underworld breaches, kind of sucks. But it getting rid of the one ring efficiently is pretty good, so I definitely like the inclusion there. Um, blind obedience and smothering tithe having like grindy options to push into the late game smothering tithe really great here obviously because of time sieve um but besides blind that obedience stock going way up still i think oh yeah Effects still like that yeah still good um get lost is an interesting one that's the one that's like the only one card that is 
a standout card to me that is something I haven't really seen too much before. Maybe that's because it's very new. Yeah, new one. Destroy target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. Its controller creates two maps. No one knows what a map is. Doesn't matter. I know what a map is. What is it? For one mana, you can have a creature explore. Only as a sorcery, though. Only as a sorcery. You can only activate yeah, only as a sorcery. Really sucks, so they yeah. can't draw the cards right away, which is kind of relevant. That's good. Also, you know, there is a containment priest in this deck, too. There is a containment which priest. Which I do think is like a tournament card. Like, I'm expecting to see a lot of cannon. Yeah, this is containment priest is one that I don't love in this uh, deck. I, I don't love it here particularly, but I see why it's included. It's a stacks piece and not a stack stack. Like, there's no other advantage that it provides, which yeah. is why I don't love it. But I was um, with Splacer Kitten. It just doesn't work with that line, which is, I mean, that's. that's it's it's okay that's okay just for me i didn't, I didn't love that just but something you have to remember I yeah guess. it's just something you have to keep it keep an eye out for is all um and talion is another card that's in this one yeah that's also very true so besides that pretty stock list tivit's still great gonna continue to be great it's another big commander that's doing good things i've been a little off of it recently for some reason the last couple of games i just haven't gotten to cast it either drown of magistrate came down quick or i died before i got to it or it just didn't work out um you know, small sample size. It happens, I think that's but an, I think that's an Esper thing. Yeah, I just, think that's maybe. Just, I have I've had a lot of games like that with Esper decks where I just start to go, hmm, this this is really slow and not doing anything. Yeah, and I can't I can't, figure... I can't really close it out as quick as I want yeah. to. I can't take advantage of my window as easily you as you can in Grixis. Never have the time or the resources to really do what you need. Dockside yeah. is just it allows you to find a window out of nowhere. You can just like right? at the drop of a hat. Tutor for Dockside. And, and when you just don't have that option yeah. to you ever, like, it completely changes how you have to play. Yeah, definitely. All right, we're going to talk about the final deck of the day. This is the winner of TC Rockets Top Deck Champion Series. Jeremy, a.k.a. Tap Space, won this event with the Weatherlight. This is a Sisse Weatherlight Captain deck. And um, there's a lot of cards that are really good in this deck. That I wouldn't play anywhere else, but seem amazing in this deck. Yes, yeah. The uh, you're winning with Bolus, Nickel Bolus. Lots of Planeswalkers going through a loop using Sisse to win the game. I believe with just two activations. Every time I look at list, they're winning with different lines. Sisse. Yeah, that's kind of one of the good things about Sisse. I think is a little bit flexible. This is the one that I've seen the most recently. I think no Gigantha. We're not doing anything with Gigantha. He's playing Bloom Tender in the main, which I feel like is just like a better Gigantha more often than not. I would agree but this deck is sweet and one of the main reasons why it's sweet is i think people don't exactly always understand how it wins or when it can win or what it can do that's how it beats me that's i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah the number the number one reason why i lose games is my own ignorance you're still a five color good stuff deck but cards like urtai resurrected which is like a counter spell on a legendary multicolored card that's really great you get to play things like rocco in the 99 which is pretty neat if you're if you want a legendary with other colors that can yeah. find more legendaries that are other colors that's pretty great i've always said if you can't decide on a commander you should play to say because you get to play, play all, all of, them. of them yeah a lot of these decks also still win with uh derevi combos with Najila too i don't know if this one is but derevi's in here that's what made me think of that i think the big one with derevi now is with emil the blessed and a guy's cradle oh uh, you make infinite green mana infinite that way green mana, and then with the derevi you use the infinite mana to flicker the derevi and flicker other stuff so you can make all the other colors that you want to and then use to say to activate to find all the legends that you want and have a protected win um one thing that i thought i would see here and we haven't is the new grand abolisher that is legendary the green white oh, one Cutsel. yeah i thought Cutsel might be good here i don't see it in this list i'm this not sure this might have been pre-cutsel this might have been actually this list has been updated as of five days ago and so. no Cutsel still so maybe it's not good enough for this person i don't know if it's good enough it just felt like one that might see playing this you deck. know what? it is in the sideboard actually okay. it's currently if you scroll down to the bottom here it is in the sideboard so it's being considered that's that's interesting this deck is great this deck is great yeah another legolas's quick reflexes deck again you're just you're trying to win with your creatures and i think this is just the perfect creature protection spell now yeah definitely and being in five colors is always good i think it's um i don't want to say underrated but you kind of forget until you get back on a five color deck like just the power naturally that a five color deck has when you have access to everything it um it's it's yeah. awesome and even though some of these cards look weird like they're all really powerful and like you just you just put some really powerful cards together sometimes they can just win games yeah so. absolutely yeah. that's the that's the best way to do it either with i mean with decks that people don't understand how they win or with just decks that have random and powerful cards in it like that Paco and Halton deck had. Yeah, right. Like that <laughs> one I can piece that together. Yeah. Is there uh is there anything else that we want to say? I don't know, I don't think so. 
I don't think there's anything else we need to say. We need to, we have a meeting we have to get on to, so we probably should wrap this up. Thanks so much for watching or listening. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Devlin, Mark Cirillo, Alan but in lowercase, Zachary Nelson, she doesn't even go here, SoCal Acura, Stormageddon, Luke Cook, AJ Awosebi, Demon of Rosgrees, Uncle Butts, Kawaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Huge shout out to Dragon Shield for supporting the show. Make sure you use our affiliate link and play to win five as the code to get yourself 5% off your order down there. Follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for more content. Thank you so much for watching or listening. See you next time. Or listening. like very different colors i promise you this is just color theory this wall and that wall and these lights are the same color i'm gonna do an echo when you say dragon shield this time okay this podcast is brought to you by dragon shield dragon you... shield dragon shield dragon no that shield, was really yes yeah, okay sorry i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't ready